Multiple myeloma is a hematological malignancy affecting plasma cells, resulting in their uncontrolled proliferation. It typically presents with crab symptoms, including high calcium levels, renal impairment, anemia, and bone pain. Let's start with its pathophysiology. Plasma cells are derived from B cells and produce unique immunoglobulins. Antibodies have a light chain and a larger heavy chain. Furthermore, these antibodies are classified into several types or isotypes, like IgG, IgM, IgA, or IgE, depending on their structure. In multiple myeloma, there's a massive proliferation of one type of plasma cell, meaning the same immunoglobulin is produced in vast quantities. The identical proteins are often referred to as paraproteins, monoclonal proteins, or M proteins. 55% of the time, a patient with multiple myeloma will have a monoclonal antibody that's an IgG subtype. 21% of the time, it will be IgA. 22% of the time, it will be the light chain only. As mentioned before, myeloma can present with crab features. Hypercalcemia occurs because plasma cells produce cytokines activating osteoclasts. The resulting bone resorption causes the release of calcium. Remember that hypercalcemia causes patients to have stones, bones, abdominal groans, and psychiatric overtones. Myeloma can also cause kidney impairment in 50% of patients, and it's due to multiple mechanisms. Firstly, the deposition of excessive proteins in the renal tubules can cause damage, but other factors like hypercalcemia and hyperuricemia can also contribute to renal pathology. Anemia is another major sequelae of myeloma and occurs in 70% of patients. When plasma cells excessively proliferate, they infiltrate the overcrowded bone marrow, causing the other cell lines to deplete. This usually results in a normochromic, normocytic anemia. As mentioned before, myeloma causes excessive bone resorption, so it causes bone pain in 70% of people. This can progress to lytic bone lesions, predisposing the patient to fractures, particularly in the vertebral bodies. Let's focus on some of the most important investigations aside from the obvious bloods. One essential diagnostic test in myeloma is a serum or urine electrophoresis. This enables us to detect the presence of monoclonal antibody. Electrophoresis works by separating proteins in our blood based on their electrical charge. The typical pattern of distribution of these proteins is pretty similar in most patients. Usually there's a large first peak, which represents albumin, followed by a number of other smaller peaks we call alpha, beta, and gamma. Antibodies show up in the gamma peak and will spike if they're excessively high, like in myeloma. This is why monoclonal proteins, or M proteins, are also described as spike proteins. It also helps us to understand why myeloma is often described as a gammopathy. Another important diagnostic test is a bone marrow biopsy, and this helps to distinguish myeloma from similar diseases like a solitary plasmacytoma. Like in many other malignancies, cytogenetics and fluorescent in situ hybridization analysis are important to determine the exact chromosomal abnormalities that's caused the cancer. Not only is this important from prognosis, but it also has therapeutic implications too. Talking about prognosis, performing a serum beta-2 microglobulin is considered the most important factor for predicting survival. This is a protein complement of MHC class 1, and so its levels are correlated with tumor load. Finally, as this disease so commonly causes fractures, a whole body, low-dose CT, is vital for detecting osteolytic lesions. Myeloma is a complicated disease requiring a multidisciplinary team led by a hematologist. Let's think about its management in terms of supportive therapy and specific therapy. Hypercalcemia can be managed with IV fluids and a bisphosphonate. Decreasing the serum calcium level will also help with the renal impairment and might also reduce pathological fractures. If there is a fracture, orthopedic fixation might be needed. Anemia can be corrected with blood transfusions and exogenous EPO. Bone pain is best managed with radiotherapy, chemo, and corticosteroids. Specific therapies include chemotherapy and in eligible patients, an autologous stem cell transplant. To remember how to symptomatically manage multiple myeloma, just remember crab bites. Hypercalcemia can be managed with bisphosphonates, renal impairment might need IV fluids, 
Anemia can be managed with blood transfusions and EPO. Bone pain can easily be managed with steroids. Thanks for listening to Townsend Teachings. Don't forget to hit the notification button, like, comment, and subscribe.